Welcome to another edition of the Plan Well podcast, hosted by owner and attorney of Cary Estate Planning, Paul Yokobitis. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Paul from Cary Estate Planning. Welcome to another episode of the Plan Well podcast. And today, I'm going to be going over some of the issues in getting estate planning started. So why people aren't planning, what the prevalence of planning actually is, and um, some of the factors that are that are contributing to a lack of planning or a, a reduction in planning over the last few years. And a lot of this was spurned by the uh, uh, recent report from caring.com. Um, every year they replay or they uh, um, they do a new survey of Americans uh, that they call the estate planning and wills study. And each year, uh, at least since 2017, uh, or it looks like 2015, they've been doing uh, a survey with YouGov that that is basically asking roughly 2,400 Americans to uh, give some response to a survey, ask, you know, asking questions about um, whether they have a plan, why they don't have a plan, if they don't, and uh, certain certain things about what they know and what they don't know and that kind of thing. So it's an overall survey about estate planning for uh, Americans, right? So the big thing is, uh, or one, one thing that kind of shocks people looking at this or really stands out is that the, the actual rate of estate planning prevalence actually has gone down significantly since uh, 2017. So that is actually at a rate of 25% fewer Americans have estate planning documents in 2020 than they did in 2017. So you would think with the the uh, increase in access, certainly with online solutions, um, some of the events since 2017, like the death of Prince, the death of Kobe Bryant, um, you know, things that just sort of put estate planning more in front of people and, and drive up the urgency for planning actually seem to have not really worked, at least not with this survey group. And so uh, what I wanted to do was talk about things that we see in our practice, um, you know, the certain the, the, the concerns uh, for potential new clients or clients that we're meeting with at their initial strategy meeting, um, considerations for estate planning, or just sort of known barriers as to why people wouldn't plan, and then, you know, basically go over the survey. And so the, the survey kind of breaks uh, the topics down for like percentage of people that said they have a will in the following years, right? 2017, 42% of people reported that they have a will. And obviously that's based on a wide variety of ages. So you would think that older adults have or are more likely to plan younger adults, maybe not so much, but the average uh, would be, you know, sort of weighted that way. But overall, 2017, the rate of people you know responding that they had a will was 42%, so not quite half, right? So, which is still arguably a pretty low number, considering that there are there are very easy and accessible estate planning solutions that people may just not know about, like holographic wills. Most states re uh, do recognize the validity of a handwritten will, and so it could be that people don't know that that's an option, or it could be that they don't consider that a will for the purposes of, of responding to this survey. Um, that's kind of yet to be determined. Um, but we do see just a slight dip from 2017 to 2019 uh, with people reporting only 40% have a will. That number drops quite a bit more from 2019 to 2020 this year down to 32%. Now, that is roughly a 25% reduction from 2017 to 2020, which is really significant. Um, and this survey, I'm trying to see when it was actually conducted, doesn't say the actual date, uh, but if it was earlier in the year, you may not have uh, gotten good results. Um, the method of, of survey is always you know, a, a part of this too, just like political polling. Um, but I think the rates of, of uh, planning has probably gone up since COVID became a thing because of the increased urgency and that kind of thing. But 
Um, the survey in, in uh, 2020 showed that um, 26 or I'm sorry, 60 percent of people still think that estate planning is very or somewhat important. But it says the the number of people who haven't yet thought about whether or not a will or living trust is important for them increased by 12 percent compared to 2019 or 12 percentage points compared to 2019. So some people obviously have it on their minds, some just don't. And it looks like the prevalence of people who haven't even considered estate planning is actually going up. And so this is not a great trend. Obviously, our objective is to make uh, estate planning easy and accessible and um, you know honest so, so that people aren't getting sold something that they don't need. But we would obviously like to see more and more people plan, uh, you know, just for their own protection. Obviously, a planned estate will always go better than an unplanned estate. And so what you would expect to see over, over the years is as technology increases and as access to planning increases, you would expect to see an increase in rates of planning. But what this survey is showing is actually that it's gone down significantly. Um, and it's gone down in every age group. So it's not just older, it's not just younger, it's across the board. Comparing um, 2019 to 2020, so only one year, we're looking at um, older or middle-aged adults are 20 and 25% less likely to have a will than in 2019. So you're actually seeing some more substantial drops for uh, middle-aged and older adults in likelihood than you do with uh, millennials or, or Gen Z, uh, which they're, they're grouping as uh, ages 18 to 34. So breaking it down by age group, we see in 2019, ages 18 to 34, 18% had a, uh, an estate plan or have estate planning documents is, is the way that they're, they're saying it. So that could be a will, it could be a living trust, or it could be a healthcare directive. That's what they're sort of con uh, considering as estate planning documents, at least one of those three, if not all. Um, so in 2019, it was 8 18%, 2020, 16.4%. So not a big fall off, but certainly, you know, in the last year, there have been more companies, you know, springing up uh, for do it yourself, app based, web based estate planning solutions. So that is surprising you would you would expect to see the millennial and uh, gen z cohort probably go up based on uh, more tech enabled access to estate planning for the age group of 35 to 54 which they're calling middle-aged adults um which is crazy because i'm 33 and i definitely don't consider myself middle-aged at least according to this i would be in in uh two years um 2019 showed 37% of people had estate planning documents, but 2020 was 27.2%, a 10% fall off or 10 percentage points fall off, uh, roughly, you know, 25% uh, drop. The older adults, which they're considering 55 and older, 60% uh, had an estate planning document in 2019 and only 47.9%. So we had over half drop off to below half. So pretty significant changes, un, unexpected, definitely. You know, we would think that all of these numbers would go up just because of the increased accessibility. So more people are generally saying that they can't afford or don't know how to get a will um, in 2020 than in previous years. So um, the, the, the reasons why people don't plan, so they break it down into um, really four different categories and these are basically responses that people could give uh, to this question like why haven't you uh, planned and so um, the first was i haven't gotten around to it right so it's just uh they just haven't prioritized it and this is probably the most significant reason that we see for people not planning or pushing off planning you know maybe they'll reach out for a webinar or a digital download or they'll read some content that we put out or see a video and uh, they'll sort of raise their hand about being interested, but they'll say, well, I'll get around to it later this year, or maybe we'll circle, circle back in a couple months, that kind of thing. It's, it's an issue of a lack of urgency for most people. Um, they haven't gotten around to it because everything else is happening first, or they're prioritizing everything else first. And they're, you know, that's the norm. Um, you see with the, with the data, 2017, 47% said that. 
2019, 50.4% said that. Um, and then in 2020, 35.7. So that that reason is going down over the years, or I guess from 19 to 20, it was going up before then. Um, but we see it all the time. It's it's incredibly prevalent that, you know, just a lack of urgency. Estate planning is incredibly important, but it lacks urgency for a lot of people. And so usually something makes it urgent, something like COVID or something like seeing a celebrity death in the media or somebody close to you dying. It makes it more tangible and more real. So it makes it more, uh, I guess, scarier, uh, more urgent generally. Um and so that seems to be a reason that's fallen off according to the survey, but we see it all the time in our practice. Uh, very, very common reason. Um, the second reason is I don't have enough assets to leave anyone. And that has actually gone up since last year. So it was 29% in 2017. It was 21.6% in 2019. And in 2020, 30.4%. And so it's interesting because we have generally seen economic improvement over over the last two years. That's certainly in the stock market. Obviously, there's there's more specific indicators of economic success or wealth or, or what have you at the individual level. But the stock market had been doing well. Um, but this is a common conception, too, is that people think that if they don't have wealth, they don't have an estate. And so if they don't have an estate, they don't need estate planning which is just incorrect, right? There's a lot of other reasons why you do estate planning, like incapacity and disability planning, like appointing a guardian, like making sure that the right people are appointed to help you out, uh, or that you're supporting causes that, that are important to you, even if you don't have anything to leave to your family, um, or if you don't have family to leave anything to, right? So uh, it's not just about wealth succession. It's about overall protection for you, making sure that your wishes are known, and then you know, making sure that things go the way that they that you want them to after you're gone. I mean, if you have a house, you need a will. That just makes things a lot easier, you know, for the beneficiaries of your estate to be able to market that home after you're gone, be able to sell it, right? Um, another reason is it, it is too expensive to set up, um, which obviously there's, there's different um, types of planning. There's different ways to plan. Certainly, uh, some solutions are free. You can you can download statutory powers of attorney forms. You can download advanced directives. Certainly, in the state of North Carolina, you can do that. Um, you can create a handwritten will. There are free uh, will template programs online. There are um, low cost solutions like uh, uh, the typical DIY planning uh, softwares or online apps. Uh, and then there are lawyers who have, you know, varying degrees of, uh, of planning, right? And so that's why we, you know, to meet this, this uh, um, issue of, you know, it's too expensive to set up, Carry Estate Planning, my firm, offers three levels of service that all give you the exact same planning uh, strategy and documents. And it's based on, you know, reducing or increasing the level of, of attorney and law firm service that you get. And so it's sort of a pick your own adventure type of thing. It's figure out what's important to you and figure out what meets your budget and see where you can make those those interests meet. And so that's certainly an issue for some people who, who believe that the only way to set up an estate plan is to go to a high priced lawyer. Right. Then, of course, you may think it's too expensive to set up. But there are plenty of solutions out there that are that are um, more budget friendly. Uh, any plan is better than no plan. Now, of course, if a plan is not set up correctly, then it can be detrimental. It could be worse than having no plan. But assuming that the plan is is correct in, in its implementation and, and strategy, then that's certainly better than um, you know having no plan at all. The um, so the the rates of it is too expensive to set up being a response. In 2017, it was four percent. In 2019, it was five and a half percent, and then in 2020, it was six and six point eight percent. So increased each year. The um, the last reason that they gave is I don't know how to get a will or living trust. So a lack of education on how to start the process. And so those percentages went you know four percent in 2017, five point seven percent in 2019, six point three percent in 2020. But there's a pretty uh, interesting statistic that Caring.com actually calls out is says three times more Hispanics say they don't know how to get a will since 2017. So a lack of access that's not just socioeconomic, but potentially because of language barriers, 
or because of a lack of access in, in communities, um, that sort of thing that, that sort of transcends, you know, the expense itself, it's, it's approachability, it's access. So, um, generally this survey overall is surprising, right? We, we would expect just with the increase in access over time for these sorts of tools to be, to be, uh, more prevalent. Um, the, the other, the other issue I think in this is that it seems like, I, so backtrack a little bit, the survey breaks it down from the prevalence of estate planning to the, the importance of estate planning and what you should know about estate planning. And the, the, what you should know is more content, like, um, you know, what is a will, what is advanced directive, starting the process, that kind of stuff. So the importance gauged how important people think estate planning actually is. So how important is it for you to have a will or a living trust? And they gauged, um, you know, the interest over those years as well. And so the, um, you know, the, the percentage of, uh, so this is comparing 2019 to 2020, we see that, you know, in 2019, it's almost 80% thought that uh, it was very or somewhat important. Um, 20 or a little over 20% thought it was not important. And then maybe 1% thought I haven't thought about it. When it comes to 2020, we see 60% think it's very or somewhat important. So a, de a decrease of about 18, 16 or 18 uh, percentage points. Uh, not important actually dropped, so that's good. Um, but it looks like that's made up by, or the, the difference is made up by people who haven't even thought about it, which is uh, be just below 20%. So in 2020, the the number of people who um, haven't even thought about estate planning skyrockets comparatively from 2019. It's it's a it's it's probably 10 times or or 12 times the number of people um, haven't even thought about it. Um, by what age do you believe someone should have a will? Most people said by the time you're 35. The next would be 45, then 55, then 65. Um, it says, uh, let's see, age breakdown of top two reasons for not having a will or, or a living trust. Um, I haven't gotten around to it. 55 plus is the most prevalent uh, age group. Um, or I don't have enough assets to leave anyone. 18 to 34, that makes sense, right? When you're young, just starting out in life, you probably don't don't uh, really value advanced planning because uh, or proactive planning because you don't have much of an estate. You probably don't have kids, or if you do, you're 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 um, um, maybe a little bit older in that range. But those those numbers make sense. The ones who just haven't gotten around to it doesn't make that much sense, though. Um, if you're 55 plus and you know we're in the high 30s percentage, that's very interesting, right? So we sort of question the, the lack of motivation there. Why, right? Um, is it truly that they haven't gotten around to it or is it because they think it's too expensive? Um, how far have you gotten in the process of creating a will? Um, not not quite. 20% have talked to a loved one. Um, not quite. 3% have consulted a lawyer, right? Made a plan for notifying loved ones of wishes or chosen executors, about 5%. Wrote down a basic plan or decided on an estate plan is about 7%, uh, researched online is not quite 10%, but roughly 20% have had that discussion with someone, right? The estate planning discussion. So it seems like, it, it, obviously these are somewhat disheartening, but um, you know, when, when we break down, you know, the, the income of respondents who feel like they do not have enough assets to leave anyone, about 50% have an income under $40,000 which would also probably mean that they they would uh, expect planning to be too expensive for them to to uh, afford. Um, the people who about 25% uh, of the people who feel they don't have enough assets to leave anyone make between 40 and $80,000, 12%, 80,000 plus, and then they have roughly 13% that, that prefer not to say. Um, it's, it's all very interesting, right? And we, we 
can look at these numbers to try to inform how we move forward in the future. Um, I think from a lawyer perspective and from from the perspective of someone who does estate planning and offers these services, we use this as as reason to diversify our offerings, to make more accessible planning options so that people up and down the socioeconomic spectrum can have more access to legal services that are you know delivered by an estate planning lawyer instead of just printing templates and filling them out. Um, but there's no, there's no perfect solution. So part of it is a lack of reach, a lack of education. Part of it is is that uh, I think across the board, there just isn't a, a massive motivation or traditionally isn't. I think in, in uh, the last few months, the motivation to plan has gone up somewhat. Um, and a lot of the people that we met with in March were first time planners as opposed to people who were updating. And so you see these sort of spikes in urgency that are driven by, you know, the media or things that are going on in uh in our daily lives that we're sort of seeing and it's amplifying, you know, the need for this type of planning. But at the end of the day, I think there's always going to be this sense of invincibility until you're told otherwise, you know, that no one seems to think that, that, uh, you know, tomorrows are not promised to anyone, right? People unfortunately die untimely all the time, every day in this, in this country. And so, uh, until, you know, something motivates you forward, it can seem really easy to keep kicking that can down the road to not plan, to not get things in place. Uh, and then, you know, if you've got other things on your plate as far as expenses that you're going to be incurring, like, you know, uh, expenses at home or, you know, other investments or medical procedures or other things that that are also going to take up some of your budget, estate planning is a really easy thing to push down, you know, down the, the line of priority. Because again, you don't necessarily think that tomorrow is uh, uh, your last day on earth, right? It's it's something that uh, certainly when you get a bad diagnosis, then estate planning becomes a massive priority. But until that comes, you're just sort of going to be motivated or not. And people who are more advanced planners or who are engaging in other, in other uh, forms of planning, like tax planning, financial planning, insurance planning, that kind of thing, are more, I think, inclined to do estate planning. And to keep up with it and update over year over the years, but you know if if you're just living your day to day life, it's usually going to take some sort of disruption of your reality to motivate you towards planning. And so, obviously, based on these survey results, you would not be alone in that in that uh, understanding or in, in that intention. And you know the issue with that though is is you know how do we correct that? Like how do we make this more? Um, I guess common more more uh more of a common discussion i guess and i'm not sure i know the answer to that we try to put out as much content as we possibly can but a lot of times we're just sort of you know uh talking to our audience talking to our tribe you know the people that we already have on board uh it's not necessarily unless we're doing you know uh, paid advertising we're not really reaching people who are not already in our sphere you know not already in our bubble and so um the amount of you know saturation in in the community that we can have on in any given day is pretty limited. Now that's sort of where the news media comes in. You know, the death of Kobe Bryant was a big thing. You know, he was only forty something years old, and you know his daughter died as well. So that was something that really hit home for a lot of people. And I would not be surprised at all if we saw rates of of wills you know jump pretty significantly, just like we did when Prince died. Same thing, you know, we sort of see, um, you know, that prevalence jump when things, um, you know, come to the forefront. And unfortunately, sometimes it takes the death of someone significant like that uh, or the death, of the, the death of a loved one to, to make that more of a motivating factor. But if, if planning is on your mind, if you're just, you're sort of, you want to have that discussion, no obligation, um, absolutely, you know, transparent, open, honest fiduciary strategies, uh, we're happy to talk. You know, you can go to our website, carryestateplanning.com, click on contact us, and you can get on our calendar. Otherwise, um, you know, do research. We've got plenty of content online. We've got, uh, I think, over 120 videos on YouTube, uh, and that's going up every day. And um, just ask the questions. If if you uh, have a lack of clarity on what it means to plan or why it's important, it's it's a good idea to ask those questions or at least seek out those answers. Um, 
but that's all for today. I hope I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Is a little um, unorganized because I was trying to go through the survey and sort of you know see the the uh, the different you know topics as they were laid out and address them, but it sort of jumped around as well. So uh, apologize for the lack of organization in that, but otherwise really great information. Um, we should have some some other great episodes coming up in the in the coming weeks, and uh, we look forward to giving you more content. It's just Paul from Cary State Planning with the Plan Well Podcast. That's it for this week's episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you all next time.